Hello, everybody. My journey begins. I'm off to Istanbul. I left my home in Montreal to uncover a family mystery which has haunted me for years. I will travel across Turkey to the heartland of the Kurdish people. My goal is to investigate my aunt's murder which took place 30 years ago her name was Guzide. Turkey is my first home. After living in the West for several years, I have an urge to return to the East. A single question compels me to go on this journey. What did my aunt do that cost her life? Whenever I return to Istanbul, my mom makes my favorite food. She was raised in the old way. She was forced to quit school to take care of her siblings. When I look at my family tree, I see grandparents who rebelled against sultans, well-known poets, an artist, but they're all men. I've always been curious about these forgotten women, erased from history. But the one who intrigues me most isn't in our pictures. The murdered Güzide, my father's sister. <laughs> Kor gibi böyle bir hasret yani hayatımda bir sefer gördüğüm bir ablamın böyle bir hasreti çöktü içerime yani yoğunlaştı böyle bütün duygularım düşüncelerim onun üzerine yoğunlaştı bilgi toplamaya başladım dedim bu gözüdenin kimleri var olabilir Gözüde's mother, my grandmother, was only 17 when she got married. Soon after, her husband left her for another woman. But my grandmother was pregnant with Guzide. Her family decided that this fatherless baby would bring shame upon them. The day she was born, they sent the baby away to live with her father's tribe in a remote Kurdish village. My grandmother was forbidden to ever visit her daughter. Unfortunately, my father has no photos of Gizide. But he did find this. It's my first clue. These two men are Gizide's brothers-in-law. I'm intrigued by this photo. The brother on the left seems to have a problem with his right hand. 
the woman in the middle is their mother. I'm not sure who the boy is. My father heard a rumor that one of these brothers murdered Gizide in an honor killing. I hope this photo will help me find them. Tonight, my family and friends are sending me off to Eastern Turkey. Tomorrow, I will be in my father's hometown. Until then, love from Istanbul. Diyarbakir is at the opposite end of Turkey, thousands of kilometers from Istanbul, near the Iraqi border. The further east I go, the more I feel like I'm traveling back in time. Diyarbakir is the spiritual capital of the Kurdish people. My father is Kurdish and was born here, but he moved to Istanbul and raised me as a Turk to save me from the prejudice he faced. I always wondered how my life would have turned out had my father never left here. Kurds are proud people, but a decade-long war for autonomy and the government repression that followed has deeply wounded them. More than half the men in Diyarbakir are unemployed. Many children can't go to school because they have to work to help their families. My first stop is my grandmother's old house. Behind these walls, my grandmother secretly shed tears for her daughter, Güzide, who was torn away from her. After 14 years of longing, she couldn't wait anymore. At the risk of her life, she searched for her daughter. When the men were away, she arranged for Guzide to be brought from her village on horseback. My distant cousin Yavuz witnessed the encounter. Çocuğunu görmeyip de aniden yetişmiş bir şekilde görmesi tabi o anlatılacak bir duygu değil. Onu yaşamak tabi çok önemli. Ve birbirlerine sarıldı tabi o işte birbirlerine sarıldılar zaten kenetlendiler. Hem ikisi de ağladı. Yani saçları örüklüydü. Tek, tek örük yapardı o. Onun heyecanı... E, Böyle bir sararma şeklinde değil. Yanakları al al olmuştu. Bak onu çok iyi biliyorum. Böyle şu yanak kısımları al al olmuştu. E zaten 
Megizde'de o gece bizde kaldı. Ertesi gün tekrar köye döndü. This morning brought bad news. Close to my hotel, a young man killed his 15-year-old sister. The girl had been raped by a cousin. When the family realized that she was pregnant, they ordered him to kill her to restore the family's honor. But where is the honor in taking a life, especially your own flesh and blood? Namus sadece kadın mıdır ya da iki bacak arası mıdır? İnsanın toprağı da namusu değil midir yani? Bunu algılayamıyor mu insanlar? Yok o onun boynuna sarılmış sana ne ben boynuna da atlarım. Sen kendine bak sen özgür müsün? Ben demeyi sevmem. Sen, sen aleyküm selam diyor musun? Eski Diyarbakır olsa siz hepinizi öldürürler diler. Nasıl haklısın? Tamam. I wanted to understand if Islamic tradition played a part in my aunt's murder. Anirkaz has got nothing to do with Islam. It has got nothing to do with Quran. Just the opposite. Killing, no matter what, is the biggest sin in Islam. So honor crimes is actually, it's a Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, customary practice, which has been wrongly associated with Islam. What were the killer's motives? Was he defying Islam? And what was the role of his family? This is a case where all the family come together. So it's not anymore the husband who kills the woman, but it's a family decision. When I say family, it's a big family. It's, it's like a tribe, it's a semi-feudal structure. So the whole family comes together and takes a decision to kill a woman or a girl. It seems that a tribe's honor can hold more influence than Islam. It may not take much to dishonor a family. If you hold hands with a boy, if you refuse an arranged marriage, or sometimes even if you're the victim of rape, the only way to fight against control of women's sexuality, to fight against these customary practices in all of women's societies, including Muslim societies, including Turkey, is women's empowerment. So therefore, women's movements and women's NGOs are the key to eradicating these practices. A lot of the women's organizations are dependent on funds from the West. And of course, Canada. Canada is one of the countries which has been very helpful in this respect. Through the hard work of local women's groups educating families, many women are saved from honor killings. In the decaying city records, I hope to find evidence of my aunt's life and perhaps her murder.
Diyarbakır Merkezi kayıtlı nüfus kayıtlarımızı bilgisayar taramasında güzide Karaozan'ın kaydını bulamadık. Nüfusa kaydı yapılmadan ölmüş. If my aunt is missing from the city records, how could I possibly learn what happened to her? It seems, even to this day, many village girls aren't worth registering. I leave the records office feeling like I've reached a dead end. But then Sherif, a family friend, who heard about my investigation, asked to meet with me. Güzide'yi iyice gördü. Ha tabii çocuk da vardı, biraz evvel de söyledi. Suya girdi bu erkek çocuk. Sherif has no photos of Güzide, but even after 30 years, he still has a vivid image of her. Güzide aynı. Yani sana bakıyorum ona. Gözler, kaşlar. It was strange meeting Sherif. Someone who knew her since childhood. I wish I was able to download my aunt's image from his mind. Before leaving, Sherif told me the name of the village where Güzide grew up. The tiny village of Milan doesn't even exist on the map, so I have to find my own way. Böyle yol boyu gideceksiniz. Çok yukarıda mı? Dağa kavuşacaksınız. Tamam, sizin tarifinizle biz buluruz. Ha, hadi olur. Çok teşekkürler. Eyvallah. İyi günler. İyi günler. Ha, çobanın dediği dağlar göründü. At last, I see my aunt's village just ahead. I wonder if the locals will be welcoming. I tell them that I'm Güzide's niece. Hasan Bey, değil mi? Güzide'nin adı. Çabani. Yani ne sahbe, Allah razı olsun. Ben Türkiye'niz anım. Ben Türkiye'niz anım valla. Güzide'nin adı. One of Güzide's friends is anxious to take me somewhere right away. I feel my aunt is almost alive in the villagers' memories. But is this rubble all that remains of her life? Rizgo is the village imam, the spiritual leader. Rizgo's mother, Bresvet, bought her son and my aunt, connecting them like brother and sister. 
Yani onlar da nasıl çocuğa seviyor, nasıl çocuğa sürdürüyor, nasıl çocuğa yani elbise, elbise, temiz falan bir var. Yani kimse onlarda kızılmayan, yani kimse onlarda şey az olmuyor. Hiç seviyor, çok seviyor. Ta benim anlayayım, ben onlar değil, ona sağladı, arası yok, kimse yok. Güzide'nin karakteri nasıldı? Hı? Nasıl birisiydi Güzide? Ya o tipini... Çok böyle üzüm, yani üzüm boylu ya adam, <gülüyor> yürüyüşü aynı jet gibi, vallahi böyle, <gülüyor> aynı erkek şey, karafetleri, erkek karafetleri. Güzide is beginning to seem larger than life. Merhaba. <gülüyor> Since TV are scarce, the tradition of storytelling still plays an important role here. Güzide's unresolved murder has become folklore. Songs about her can still be heard to this day. Güzide de gote bu kamuktarani Cesur bir kadındı vallahi erkeklerden korkmuyordu. Yani gerçekten silah elinde gelseydi o adam adama vurabilirdi yani. Gerçek bir kadındı yani. Kadın diye ama erkeğe benziyordu. I search for glimpses of Güzide in the faces of the women here. Meanwhile, the villagers start to identify me with Güzide. Sen geliyor, gidiyor. Her zaman o, seki o, yani Güzide o adam sağdır. I feel like I find a second family here in Milan. <laughs> Strangely enough, being a member of this big family marked Güzide's fate. Bizim köyde kimse onun nikahı da yani olmuyor. Herkesi bacanidir, herkesi sütü yemiş. Yani o, o olmasa bizim köylerde yabancı adam vermiyor. But at 15, Güzide was married to a stranger. The mayor's son from a neighboring village paid a high bright price for her. <gülüyor> I wonder if anything has changed since Güzide's time. <gülüyor> İki tane evlidir. Bir de köyde bir de diğer bakırda oturuyorlar. Yani babam onları zorla verdi gerçekten. Zorla vermişler. Ama ben ben dedim ki ben zorla evlenmek istemiyorum. Kimi seviyorsam onunla evlenmek, evlenmek istiyorum. Many of the young men here can't even afford to get married. Şimdi ne diyelim? Artık o kız gitti. Ben hiç kimseye artık bakmayacağım. Ne kadar başlık parası isteniyor genelde? Genelde 5 milyar, 6 milyar. Bizden yukarı köyler var. 15, 20 milyar istiyorlar. Bir minibüs istiyorlar. İşte. Peki hangi kızların daha fazla başlık parası daha yüksek? Nasıl oluyor? Misal diyelim bir kız güzeldir. Kaç tane genç onu seviyor. İdaya giriyorlar. O diye ben alacağım. O kız daha yüksek oluyor. Onun başlık parası daha fazla oluyor. <laughs> if a girl dares to challenge her family's honor by eloping, it could cost her her life. I wonder if my aunt was killed because she went against this code of honor. My driver Ishrif has two wives. I asked him his opinion about love. Peki mesela sizin eşiniz, sizin hanımınız gibi bir hanım böyle 12 yaşında evlendirilmiş. Bir başkası da e, daha sonra gönlü düşse, bir başkasıyla evlenmek istese. Öyle bir dava kesinlikle olamaz. Niye? Olamaz işte burada. 
Ne olur öyle bir şey olursa? Yani öyle bir şey olamaz. Olduğu zaman da onun ölüm fermanı olur. Yani fermanı, ölüm fermanı kendi eliyle hazırlanmış olur. Ya daha doğrusu açıkça söyleyelim. Burada erkek sözü geçer. Yani söz hakkı erkeğindir. I'm staying with a family of five children. The eldest, Leila, stays home from school, cooking, cleaning, and looking after her brothers. Leila's family can't afford a bride price for her brother. When her brother gets married, they will exchange her for his bride. Leila, where did you get it? What do you say, Leila? Can you ask for your brother? No, I don't want to. He's very funny. Why do you want to get married? Daha küçüktür yani büyürse o da kendi kendine ister. O büyük olsa o da kendine birisi bulacak. Yani daha Ondan küçüktür sonra... yani. 12 yaşında olacak. vardır yani. But what Leila really wants is to go to school one day. Do you want to read it? Yes, I do. But when I read it, I can read it. Yes, I can read it. Yes, I can read it. Yes, I can read it. Yes, I can read it. Böyle kendi kendine yazıydı. <gülüyor> Bütün gece oturdu evet. çalıştı. Saat 10 Canım. ona kadar yazdı. <gülüyor> Öğrenmiş ama hepsini. Bırakmadım okula gidip. O çok istedi. Ona gideyim gideyim dedim yok. Gitme gibi. <gülüyor> Bırakmadım. Bıraksaydım çok gidip çok istedi. Çok akıllı ama bak ne kadar meraklı hemen öğrendi. Çok daha o olmasa hiç ben edemeyim. Yani bir gün hasta olsam bir yere gitsem. O hemen yani çocuklara yemek yapıyor, çamaşır yıkıyor. Yani ev işi ne olsa o gülü. Leyla made this headscarf for her dowry with her own small hands. By giving me her most precious possession, I feel she's accepting me into her family. By the way, a man saw me with my headscarf today and told me my bride price would be 1,000 sheep, 500 kalashnikovs, 50 camels and 10 horses. I felt at once degraded, yet strangely flattered. Thank you. 
Today, there is a wedding in Milan. Everyone in the village is invited naturally because they're all related. <laughs> Weddings are the biggest events in people's lives here. They are not always registered, but stories about them are passed from generation to generation, like fairy tales. <laughs> Shirfe is the village storyteller. Through her songs, she can tell the entire history of the village. She told me her version of my aunt's story. <laughs> Shirife told me Kuzide cried just like this bride that day. Did she foresee her dark future? On her wedding day, the bride leaves her family and friends behind. Now, she belongs to her husband's family. From now on, her visits to home will be restricted. It turned out that Guzide's wedding marked the beginning of a series of tragedies. Sherife identifies the boy in the photo. It's Guzide's son. He died soon after this photo was taken. Guzide cried for him for over a month, never leaving her home. But her misfortune didn't end there. Soon after, her husband was gone down in a blood feud with another village. Guzide was now a childless widow. As was the custom, Guzide was then expected to marry one of her two brothers-in-law. But I wonder what Guzide wanted for herself. After a sleepless night, I realize it's time to face the dark side of Guzide's life. Who murdered her and why? I find out that Guzide was killed in a nearby village named Tepecik. But the villagers warned me not to go there. <laughs> I've come all the way from Canada to find out what happened to my aunt. So despite my anxiety, I head for Tepecik to confront the potential murderers.
barely a few kilometers away. I feel like I'm in a no man's land. Soldiers stop our van, blocking our entrance to Tepecik. I'm told that Tepecik is torn by a civil conflict between Kurdish separatists and the Turkish army. On our way back, I see a sign for Karajoran. This rings a bell. An old man had told me that Guzide once lived in this village. On a whim, I decide to go there to look for the two brothers-in-law. I see some guys at the entrance of the village, wondering who we are. So are you recording? I push my fears aside and show them the photo I have with me. They tell me that one of the brothers, Baki, visited this village just last week. When my questions start making them nervous, my friend steps in to help. Teşhisten çok yani onlarla hani bu kadını tanıdıklarına dair görüşme yapmak istiyoruz yani konuşmak istiyoruz daha doğrusu. Türkçe bilmiyorlarsa da Kürtçe konuşabiliriz yani. Kadını ona bile siz az önce bazı sorular sordun ona çekindiler biliyorsunuz o konuda. Yani aslında çekinmeyin niye çekinsin? The villagers lead me to a woman who heard the gunshots that night. Şevunem çünço. Şevu karabalık atan bozdan. At the scene of Kuzide's murder, once again, all I find is destruction. I'm amazed how this village opened its arms to me. Yet I sense they are still hiding something. I had a dream last night. I'm lost in a strange land. In the distance, I hear a voice singing. It's my aunt. I have a feeling that she's happy now that I'm following in her footsteps. When she leaves me, I realize I never really saw her face. I regret not taking her picture. I feel sad 
for missing this opportunity. A villager from Milan says there is someone who has important information to tell me. Makbule gave me contacts for Baki and Kadri. They both live in Tepecik, behind a roadblock. I call the first number. It's out of service. My heart pants as the second number rings. Could this be the murderer? Somebody answers. It's Kadri. He's suspicious, but agrees to meet me, as long as he can bring his son. I feel safe in the hotel. I feel protected here. As soon as I see him, I see the resemblance to the man in the photo. He has a crooked hand, just like the man in the photo. I ask him to tell me the truth. <laughs> Jimmy, <gülüyor> Ayrıca kabul etmediler bunu. Diğer kardeşlerim, akrabalarım. Yok, öyle bakı yalnız. Ötürdü başka, başka bir yere. Benden başka bir yere. Geri tali, karaca yöre. Benden or oradaydı. Yüzüceği aldım, getirdim oraya. Yıkarladım. Üç, dört ay arada geçti, geçmedi. Gece ben evde, evde değildim. Havlaya çıkmış. Kimi tarafından bir iki kişi varmış herhalde, havada bir gizlemişleri, bir yüzdeye vurmuş, vurmuşlar. Siz kimin tarafından vurduğunu biliyor musunuz? Geceymiş. Mahkeme görmüş, adam taktik olmuş. Mahkemede, ağır cüzede mahkeme oluyor. Şu, şu tespit edilmediği için bana tatil etmiş. Ben, ben de davacıydım. Davacıydınız ama Davacı. kimin tarafından olduğunu biliyorsunuz. Kesin biliyoruz. Şüphe, şüphe üzeri biliyoruz. Kim peki şüphe, şüpheli misiniz? Güzide kimin, kimin vurduğunu düşünüyorsunuz? Biz bunun üzerine attık. Akın üzerine attık. O da bir yok, yok ben geceymiş yani gündüz değil. O da inkar etti. Ben değilmişim. Düşmanlık, düşman tarafından vurulmuş. Fakat geri de geldi. Kartıma göre ben kardeşime dava, dava ettim. Davacı yok. Konuşuyor musunuz arada He. bu meseleyle ilgili? Konuşuyoruz ama çok fazla değil. Birimizi sevmiyoruz. Ben, ben çok üzülüyorum. Güzelin ölümüne... ...boşu boşu. Hiçbir zaman da hatırına çıkmıyor. İnan o zaman hatırına. Bir seri gördüm, 
tam güzel hat, hatırını ben burada hazır olur biliyor. Anladım. All this time I've been looking for Guzide's murderer, but instead I found the man she loved. After all her tragedies, she had nothing to lose and finally chose to follow her heart, even if it meant that she would die for it. Had I been able to go to Tepecik, I would have come face to face with Baki, Guzide's alleged murderer. Now Baki is just an old man, half blind and half deaf. To my amazement, the most unexpected person walks in. Sharif has come to say goodbye. He's shocked to see me sitting with his former enemies. As these former enemies share old stories, I realize how close they must have been before the vendetta started. Artık diyorum Şerif Bey şu kan davası bitsin. Bitti bitti. Ami biliyor. Bitti, bitti, bitti, bitti. Bu Ami bak. Zaten babamız yaşındadır. Babam da Only time will tell if the vendetta is really over. But for now there seems to be a glimmer of hope between the two families. İki aileyi de birbirine getirdiniz. Tanıştık, konuştuk Hacab ile. Çok güzel oldu yani. Tanışmamız iyi oldu. Sohbet ediyoruz burada, görüşüyoruz. My journey is coming to an end. I wasn't able to find even a single photo of Guzide. But Kadri told me that I don't need a photo. I just need to look in the mirror to see Guzide's face. Ironically, it's women like Guzide whose stories turn into songs and inspire the next generations. On my last day in Milan, I connect the school to the internet to help girls like Leila open up to the world and perhaps even change their destinies. A 
As I leave the dusty roads of Diyarbakir, I'm sending you a photo of me with Leila. Will she be able to follow her dreams? And at what cost? Thank you.